Hey everybody, it's your girl Fay Renee. Welcome back to today's episode of Power Book 3, Raising Canaan. First Thoughts with Fay Renee. This is episode 5. This is Choose Your Battles. And baby, you better choose your battles wisely because Unique and Rock are in a battle for power. And it's ongoing. They're trying to best each other. Let's break it all down with the 411. Episode 5, Choose Your Battles. Oh, wow, you guys, this is a big packed episode. And when we left off last week, Mama Rock had found a bloody shirt. Well, hey, when it opens up today, Mama Rock had the bloody shirt on the kitchen table, and it's time to get in Canaan's ass. Woo! Mama Rock breaks it down really quick to Canaan. She says, I know you're lying. I've been waiting a few days, and you and Marvin are both lying. So I don't want to hear no bullshit. But Canaan covered for Marvin like the little G he is. And he said, I volunteered to help Marvin. She knows he was at the stash house. She knows all about the robbery and everything. But Marvin lied and never admitted that Kanan was there. So there. Mama Rock makes it clear to Kanan she don't have time to deal with this shit right now. And she goes on and has a meeting with her two top men, her brothers, Lulu and Marvin. Now, this is the first time Lulu heard all the bullshit that Marvin pulled. And he's just smirking through the whole meeting. <laughs> And Mama Rock said, you know what? Don't none of that shit matter now. We're making moves to make the organization bigger and better. She says, the point is, we know that Unique was the nigga behind this stash house robbery. And when we handle him, we handle everything. So that's the end of that shit. Let's move. <laughs> After Mama Rock leaves the house, the two brothers leave the house and they still bantering back and forth because... You know, Lulu is teasing the hell out of Marvin about how stupid he was in the whole thing. And Marvin is giving as good as he get. And finally, Marvin takes a low blow at Lulu and says some nasty shit about him being a wannabe Quincy Jones. And it was on. And they started fighting fisticuffs, the two brothers out front. Luckily, a cop car comes by and says, hey, cut that out. And the brothers stop. And you know what? They didn't do anything to them because all the cops knew in the neighborhood, the Rock brothers, you know, so... Nothing happened. They just quit fighting and the cops kept going. Next. Meanwhile, at the after school classes, Kanan is enjoying the fucking classes. Kanan's like, I like this shit. So he tells Symphony that I really enjoyed the class, you know, in Kanan's language. And Symphony said, that's cool. You got a lot of talent. He said, listen, take my number. They kind of bonded. It was really cool. Take my number if you ever need me for anything. Just call me. I don't care what it is. You know, I'll try to help you out. And I thought that was really cool. Symphony is a great boyfriend for Rock. Actually, he's too good for her. But that's my opinion. Next. Meanwhile, good old Detective Howard has to go back to the doctor's office about his cancer. And she says, this shit ain't looking good. We got the test back from your cousins and none of the bone marrows is a good match. So you're going to have to do some holistic methods. You're going to have to take care of yourself. You're going to have to work out. You're going to have to stop smoking. And he looked at her like, is she out of mind? And she says, do all these things to elongate your life. And he's thinking, what the fuck is she saying? She said, basically, you're on the public bone marrow list and that shit is looking bleak. We may not get you a match but you can elongate your life until we get and if we get you a match and you know then this fool walks outside from the apartment and the first thing this dummy does is light up a cigarette you know okay black men sometimes i don't know now remember that we're gonna revisit detective howard's bone marrow test later <laughs> So Detective Howard has got to do his work. He gets his little protege. They go to the empty stash house robbery scene and all they see is blood and Kanan's vomit. And they're like, yeah, this was a stash house robbery. But he tries to tell the little protege, we ain't got nobody. We ain't got no crime. But I got an idea who might have done this. So he puts his little plan into place. And I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> So meanwhile, I told you last week, Rock is making fast moves to reorganize, and I give her credit for that. She got to move fast in the game. So she gets back over to the projects where she wants the two apartments stacked on each other so she can hide product and they can do whatever they got to do. It's 5 will come and they get busted. So she's talking to the manager and she's inside this, this apartment that's evidently somebody's occupying it. And the guy comes home and says, what the fuck y'all doing in my apartment? You ain't getting my apartment. And she says, oh, yes, we are. This is going to be my apartment. And the manager's like, wait a second, wait a second. And the dude has eight months more on his lease, but, you know, she gives a nod to her heavyweight Marvin, and Marvin beats the dude down. It's so fucking nasty. Every time I think they got a saving grace, they show me they ain't shit. I'm serious. So he beats the poor man, and she, he, she says, you know who I am? He's like, yeah. He knows now he's in the company of the great queen pen, Mama Rock. And she says, so this is going to be my place. All that matters now is how you going to deal with it. He go like, 
and he's all fucked up and bloodied up. It was wrong. That's when I don't like her. Anyway, whew. so Marvin gets his crew together. They come in and try to clean the joint up because, you know, they're going to be cooking there and doing all kind of shit there. But one thing Roxanne was true about the project move, she'll be out of sight, out of mind of the cops. And she'll have a great look overview of many city blocks to see if they ass coming so they can get out before they even get there. So that's a good spot. Good move, Rock. Okay, now part two on her moving up with the organization. She goes to her new stash house with the triple steel doors at the little bodega shop. And the owner is their puppy. And he sees her moving all these stacks of cash and all these drugs in there real neat on the shelves. And he said, hey, I'm taking a high risk. I might go to jail for this if the cops come in. And she said, that's the risk you took. That's why I'm paying your ass. He said, well, I want to uh, 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 negotiate. She said, we already negotiated. We shook hands. He said, I want to renegotiate. She said, no, no, no. We shook hands. And after we shake hands, the next thing we do is throw hands. And you don't want that motherfucker. <laughs> and Poppy backed up. <laughs> Mama Rock is bad. <laughs> now back at home, Kanan confronts Mama and said, Mom, you're trying to play me. You, you, you got me in school. You mad at me. You took me out to stash house. You know, I want to be in the game and blah, 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 bullshit. He said, Mom, at least you could do is teach me how to cook. She's like, fuck, this motherfucker want to know how to cook drugs. She's like, damn, Kanan, you really are my son. What the kind of... <sighs> the dynamics between this mother and the son is wacko. But, you know, that's the street life. Street life. Anyway, <laughs> that happened. Next. Now, y'all check out this crazy shit that went down. Famous jukebox and Kanan is at the little store, you know, messing around like they always do talking shit. And Kanan looking all crazy because he concerned about who gave up the stash house on his mom robbed him and he got a good idea who did it so juki said i got a good idea who did it too he said i know who did it she said you ain't gonna like what i'm thinking but i think it was davina he said what he got mad famous like damn she said that so they took it outside and he and his cousin jukebox got into an argument i didn't like that because they real close but he was trying to defend his new girl davina he said davina i don't know shit. i never even invited her inside the house and she said she said well who do you think did it he said i know who did it it was scrappy scrappy she said wait a second Kanan. scrappy is like family scrappy is your mama's top lieutenant he would never do that bullshit. he said well let me tell you something I think he did it. And besides, Jukebox, I know your secrets. So you better not say a goddamn word about Davina. And Jukebox was like, oh, shit. That's when she got a taste of the, the new Canaan. And so they split up down the street, and Juki was mad as hell. Famous ran out and said, hey, Juke, it's going to wear off. It's going to wear off. Hey, come go down to the recording studio with me and watch me record my song, and we have a little fun. And she said, oh, fuck it. Go ahead. So she went on down to the studio, and uh, that was cute. Next. Okay, now, down at Bulletproof Studios with old stupid-ass Crown Comancho, they recording Famous. Famous doing his little rap, rap a dap dap Juki's sitting on the couch, and she jamming to it. And Uncle Lulu is there, too, with his girl, Jess. They all watching Famous do his thing. And then they said, we need the backup singers now. And so the sound man, the white sound guy, said to Crown, you know, you ain't got no backup singers and stuff because you don't pay nobody. It turns out Crown ain't shit. He be welching all his debts and shit. <laughs> so Crown said, don't embarrass me like that. So Lulu is the man. That's a smart mofo. He's as smart as his sister Rock or smarter. Now, Lulu is the baby brother. The oldest one of all is Marvin, who's the goofy ass. But anyway, Lulu steps up to the plate and said, what you need to keep the lights on sound, man? Man's like, a couple of Gs. So Lulu give him about 10 grand so he can pay everybody in the studio. And then he calmly looks at Crown and says, you know what? Juke going to be in that recording with Famous. And Crown is like, wait, he said, that's it, that's all. So Juke got in the recording roof and tore that shit up. Even Famous was looking at it. Everybody loved it. And Juke was so happy. Juke is so excited. She runs back to her girlfriend's house, Nicole. She brings recording, and they go up in her bedroom, and they jam into it. And Nicole says, Famous don't sound that good, but you sound lovely. So they start getting it on in the bed. They kiss it and make it out real heavy. And the music is playing. And all of a sudden, oh, my God, Nicole's white mother 
burst into the bedroom and bust the girls making out. She like fucking freaks out on Juke. She said things to Juke you don't say to a kid. She said, you are fucking repellent. Ah, you are disgusting. Get the fuck out of my house. I never want to see you again. I may call the police and have you arrested for rape. Rape, give me a fucking break. So the white girl is screaming, no mother, no, I was kissing her. Okay, on two fronts, mom couldn't get it. She couldn't get one that her daughter was gay. Two, especially that her daughter like a black gay girl, you know, and was kissing her. So it had to be that the black girl was raping her daughter. Anyway, I'm like, rock now, fuck that noise. That was such bullshit. Well, this really traumatized jukebox right after her first recording. She was feeling really good about herself. And this was her first relationship too. Juke went down the street in tears and majorly fucked up in the head. I don't know what happened to her. We found out next week. It was messed up. Oof. Next, 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 next big bomb thing. So during this time, Kanan rushes home to get his peace because he want to confront Scrap for what he thinks he did. He thinks that Scrap is the one that set up the robbery at the stash house with his mom. But his mom catches him and said, what's up? You on fire? He said, oh, I want to go to the pizza joint. She said, let me give you a ride. So Mama Rock gives him a ride down to the pizza joint. He goes in sneakily and comes right back out. But guess who's lurking outside? Mama Rock is being followed by Detective Howard because he's trying to get a lead on who broke into the stash house and evidently murdered somebody too. So he tells his little protege, Detective Howard tells her, we ain't gonna follow Mama Rock. We're gonna follow Prince Defcon. Defcon Stark was the name of Kanan Stark's dad, who's dead now. He said, we're gonna follow little Prince Defcon Stark because if we follow him, he may lead us to the queen pen, who I suspect is behind all this shit. So they follow Kanan. They see Kanan go around the alley and Kanan finds Scrappy. Oh my God. Kanan approached Scrappy like, man, I know you did this shit. You pretended you were sick and you the one that, that had unique take down the stash house. He said, man, you a motherfucking lie. I know that your mama didn't send you here. Your mama know better. If you were Rock's son, I would fuck you up. And they got into a fight. So they fight. They fighting hard and he busts Kanan's lip. And then that's when Howard, Detective Howard's slick ass got in the middle of it and said, hey, stop it. And he pulls Kanan into the police station along with Scrappy. Now, this is the first time. And 15 year old Kanan has been pulled in by the law. And detective tries to squeeze him. He thinks he's smart. He says, um, so uh, I may not hold you here, but I need some information. And Kanan is smart. His mother got him well versed. He says, I'm not talking. I'm waiting for my adult guardian to show up. Because <laughs> Kanan's 15. And so he says, give me some information, man, so I can just let you go. So the only thing Kanan told him was his birthday. Now, while he's sitting there, his nose is all bloody. Detective Howard said, here, he gives him a handkerchief. Clean yourself up. He cleans himself up and leaves the handkerchief on the desk. Bad move. Now, remember, that handkerchief has got his DNA. It's got his blood. What if it leads him to the stash house where Kanan vomited? If it matches. Anyway, that's what I was thinking. So, detective ain't thinking that. But all of a sudden, Kanan's guardian shows up. And it ain't Mama Rock. You'll never guess who it was. It was Mr. Fan Symphony. He showed up for Kanan. Boy, and it was on between him and Detective Howard. Detective Howard said, you ain't his guardian. He says, I'm a close friend of the family and I'm here to pick him up. And then he could tell the guy was educated. Detective Howard is a nasty mofo. He says, oh, I get it. We got another nigga here with a law degree from a university of nothing. Damn. <laughs> Woo! Symphony says, I ain't a nigga and I ain't your brother. Well, Kanan is big time impressed with Symphony now more than ever. He's like, damn, this man got some balls after all. Kanan is like, woo, I love this. So now he says, Kanan, you can go. Symphony drives Kanan home and on the way home, uh, Kanan begs him not to tell Mama Rock. And Symphony says, I'm not going to lie to your mother, but I'm not going to give you up. She asked about it. I'm going to tell her if she don't. We cool. Kanan goes back. That was that. Now, back at the station, no CS Howard starts looking up DEF CON's records. And he sees that there's no way this child, Kanan, based on Kanan's birthday that he gave Detective Howard, that he could really be the biological son of DEF CON Stark. Holy shit. What a plot twist. So now, if he's not the father who is, 
You already guessed it. We'll find out later. Okay, next. A couple of times in episodes, and in this one too, Detective Howard has indicated that he and Rock used to have a thing. He even said it to Kanan in the station. So, he very well could be Kanan's dad. Later that evening, when Mama Rock is driving home, she spies Scrappy walking down the street. So she pulls over and says, get in, Scrappy. And Scrappy said, look, look, I had to represent. My crew was there. I had to found Kanan. <laughs> he said he was starting a lot of shit. You know I didn't do that shit with the stash house. She said, let's talk. And that's the end of that scene. Hmm, that's a definite setup for the next episode. Wow. So check out this gangster plot twist that I think that's going down. In the next scene, Scrappy is at Unique's place talking about he want to flip. Okay, and Unique said, you want to come in the micro? What's up? He said, you know, I'm sick of rock. Fuck rock. Rock want to put her son Kane in the head of me, and that motherfucker came at me today. And Unique is smiling. He said, I heard about that. Because one of Unique's boys was down at the police station. He saw the fight. He saw all the shit was legitimate with the anger between those two. And he said, I gave her five years of my life. I put in my bit, and she turned on me like that. Fuck her, man. I want to make some money, and I don't want no bullshit. And Unique is like, yeah, this is good, because Unique and Rock are at war to see who's going to win and take over the town. I still got my money on Rock. I think this flip is a flip. I think that Rock is setting up Unique. And she put Scrappy in there undercover. But I hope it's not to Scrappy's detriment and they figure it out because it might cost him his life. But we won't know that until next week and beyond. Now, this is nuts. Back at home, it's the evening time now. Rock got to give Kanan his answer about will she teach her son how to cook dope? This crazy bitch relented and said, I'm going to teach you. And you know why? Something may happen to me one day. I can't even get through this. <laughs> and I need to know that you're going to be okay. So she tells him to cover his face, to keep the fumes from poisoning him and getting him high and everything else, and teaches him how to cook it. And then after they got the rocks produced, she teaches him how to cut it and everything. Like a good little street mama should. God damn. To a pathetic. But that's what went down. And that's how Katie became Katie. And I'm telling you, every episode, Mama Rock is all that. Mama gonna knock you out. That is what made Kanan Kanan over and over. Jesus Christ. Amazing. And finally, finally, Detective Howard comes by that evening and talks to Rock out front of the house and confronts her about what he thinks about Kanan's birthright. And you know what she says? You stay the fuck away from Kanan. She doesn't deny it. But guess what? Remember the handkerchief? All you got to do is run the test. Now, what will they do with it? Once it comes back, he is the father. If it comes back that he is the father, I think he got a lot of bargaining space. He can get bone marrow from Canaan. It's probably going to match. It'll save his life. You guys, so next week we got to find out if Scrappy is really going to flip over to Unique and if Unique going to buy that bullshit. <laughs> Will Mama Rock fess up to Detective Howard actually being the biological father of Kanan? And if so, will Kanan's bone marrow match and save Detective Howard? Or will they bargain? He keeps the secret and he gets the bone marrow. We'll see. Power, power, power. You know I love you. <laughs> okay, you guys, until next week. Make sure if you have not subscribed to my channel, you do, please hit the red subscribe button once, check the little bell once, and you will be notified whenever I drop the next new hot, crazy, and powerful, and wonderful, and super unconventional video. <laughs> Just hit the red subscribe button. So you guys know the drill. That's it. That's all. This is Faye Renee. I will check you next week. Bye!